Right, YouTube, how's it going? Buster here, weekly video. Uh, before I start, I was getting, I've got, I've had one kind of nasty comment in uh, one of my videos, and it was one of my early videos. So just to illustrate about my channel, my channel's not about my plane, it's about the, the bases and how they sort us out, and give you a wee bit of a thing of the sound. It's not about, I don't do this for money, I'm not looking to make money on it. <coughs> I've said before, I just like to document the bases that I get a hold of and some of the weird and wonderful ones that I have had and had in the past. So, I don't care about your comments, if you're, if you're nasty comments, I don't bother me. I don't see the, I don't see the reason why you have to put nasty comments on somebody's video. Uh, there's no need for it. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. That's the way I am. If I don't like somebody's video, I'm not going to tell them that I don't like it or I just don't comment. So, saying that, people who are subscribing, thanks very much. Hope you like the content and uh, there will be more of it. But my videos are more about my base plane. I'm, they're about the bases. So, now that I've said that, here's this new base. So, uh, a video on my Jim Reed 5 string uh, and I, I didn't know what I was going to do with it <coughs> and I happened to speak to a guy from Edinburgh who had this and I was kind of speaking to him and saying to him that I was selling it originally and I said to him would you consider a swap and he's like oh what have you got he says I'm looking for a 5 string so I sent him pictures of the Jim Reed and he, he's like, yeah, bring it over and we'll I'll have a look at it. The gym he was set up beautifully, beautifully good, brand new strings and everything, and done the deal. So, I've always wanted one of these. Uh, I wanted the, like, the blonde one, the, the kind of, the yellow slab body, but now that I've got this, I really like this. So that's me, I've got my 50s P-Base, 50s style P-Base. So this is a 2020. <coughs> This is a, a clutter. I've seen this to my Malco. I, I don't know what, what Squire are doing or Fender are doing. I've read somewhere that this used to be, these, this model used to be the vintage modified because it's got, it's not with a slab body, it's got like a standard P based body, like an up to date P based body, but it's got the 50s styling. <coughs> but this is a CV, this is a classic vibe. So for what I've read, I think the VM was first, then they changed it from VM to the CV. I think, I'm not 100% sure. As I say, I'm still in controversy about the Chinese squires. I don't know what the crack is with them, because they don't come with uh, skunk stripes. You don't need them if it's a two-piece neck. Uh, neck. Uh, so that means if the fretboard's joined to the neck, you don't need the skunk stripe, because obviously you just put the truss rod in before you put the fretboard in. Uh, you only really need the skunk stripe if it's a one piece but Fender have adopted that as their kind of signature as every one of their bases have got or of guitars have got skunk stripe but the Chinese don't I don't, I don't know I'm still kind of trying to look at it now this is an Indonesian made one it's got the skunk stripe it's also got the skunk stripe because I think it's a one piece neck I'm not 100% sure because it's been finished the neck, so it's got the kind of uh, lacquer over it. Uh, so the fretboard's actually lacquered. So I can't tell if it's a one piece neck. I think it is. I think it's a one piece. It must be because the one piece necks get the slug put in. Uh, normally, if it's a two piece neck, you don't get that slug. So I don't know. I'm not percent sure of the finish because I can tell with the yeah, I can tell with the Bronco it's a one piece neck because it's no finished like this. So it's not got varnish on it or uh, lacquer, should I say. <coughs> so yeah, 2020. It's got kind of brushed steel uh, hardware, which is quite nice. It's not the two saddle bridge. It's got like, I don't know if you can get you to see this. So years ago, well, back in the day, when they came up with this four saddle thing, 
They used to use what was called uh, thread, well, threaded rod. It used to be. And you used to just cut it up and make saddles, draw logs in it and make saddles at them. So that's got that kind of uh, saddles on it. Uh, what else to say? White pit guard. I don't know if I'm going to keep the white pit guard on it. I've seen quite a few of these where people take this off and it's just the body, but I don't like the screw holes in it. I would have liked to have had it where the scratch plates was optional and you would put the holes in it so there was no holes in it. I don't like you can see the holes when I stay scratch blood, but take it off, it's obviously this lovely whitey pinky colour with a kind of hint of blue through it. Which is quite a nice colour. The body's made of pine, like the original. Uh, I don't think what else. Mm. Yeah, it's a, it's a kind of whitey pink colour, which is really, it is really nice. Uh, there was another one came up, a sunburst one that I probably could have got if I did a bit of ducking and diving like I normally do but I didn't see the point in having two of these that's it I'll never buy a fender one of these I don't think uh, this will just be my 50s P base for now I think I'm just going to keep it uh, I've always wanted one of these ever since I started playing the bass the two basses that I really wanted when I started playing was a 50s style P bass and a 1989 uh, Fender Jazz Special. Like, I know that isn't a Jazz Special, but that's the closest I came to it when I was 17. Uh, Fender Jazz Special that Duff McKagan used. Uh, had to be a 1989. They reissued them as the boxers, uh, but they don't do the yellow colour, which is unfortunate, because if they did, I probably would have bought one of them. They just do, and they've not got a black painted neck either, the boxers. Black headstock, do them in really funky colours, black, red, some other ones, green, I think they've got a green one. But the, the 1989 one that Duff uses has got a black neck, a black painted neck. The boxers don't. That's the closest you're going to get to a used one or without buying a, a signature. And the 89s are quite expensive, the property 89s. <coughs> so, above babbling, a uh, brand new set of rotal sounds on it. Don't know if I've said this before because I've tried to do this video quite a few times, so we'll say it again just in case. When I bought this, it came with flats on it. And whoever put flats on it had filled the nut, but filled the groove, eh, the D string to. Was it A string or the D string? I think it was the A string. I've got it up here somewhere. That's your original nut. I think it was the A string actually, this one. And filled it too much. So with the flats on it, it was fine. Uh, I changed it to the rotor sounds and as soon as I put them on two things happened one, the string was too low to the fretboard because they cut the nut too much and the brake angle from here to there wasn't enough so when you, you moved the string it actually bounced out of the nut so uh, I had to make a new nut so what I had to do was luck enough I, I make it all, I don't buy nuts, so I don't see the point. Because uh, you always need to file them and sand them anyway. So if you're going to buy a nut, then why not just make it yourself? Because you're going to do most of the work anyway to fine tune it. So what I do is I buy <coughs> bone online. So normally I'm going to buy it, it's in my box somewhere. So I buy, I've got loads of this. I need to buy actually more of the, the Fender style ones. So this is a blocker uh, bone. So once you polish this, it looks it looks nice. So I buy a load of this, and this can be used for uh, Gibson style nuts, that kind of half moon one. Or you can, if you really want to, you can fell it like mad and make one of these. If you if you don't have the other stock, I've got the other stock is about this length, and it's thinner. And I buy that because you can make fender nuts out of it and all you have to do is maybe fail it maybe half a mil off it and it'll fit and also if you ever need to make a saddle for a, a, a bone saddle for a, an acoustic it's the right length if you ever need to make one but generally I just cut them in half and I can get two fender nuts out of one blank I could, if I had a bandsaw 
which I might need to invest in. If you have that, the thickness of that, if you have that, bang on. You can get two fender nuts out of it. But you need to be really precise. Otherwise you're losing a lot of material to make a fender nut. Because it's like, you can, uh, yeah, it's exactly double the thickness of a fender nut. <coughs> so if you've got a really thin bandsaw and you're nice and straight, you could probably get two fender nuts. I used to do that. I had a bandsaw in mother house. And that's what I used to do, set up a wee jig. You just push it through and you literally, but if you need to be precise with it, because you've just got a wee bit of failing and that should get enough. Should not suit it. But worst case, you just sand that tail to half the size, cut it to size, shape it, and you've got a nice nut. So, yeah, so I had to make a nut for it. Uh, if, you don't, if you don't want to make your, your own nuts, then you can buy them and just uh, music lily sell them. Uh, trying to think who else and a few other ones so this is a proper bone nut on this uh, the one that came off it I think was graphite no, it might have not been graphite because it wasn't black uh, I don't know, it might have been bone or a synthetic bone but this is a now a uh, proper bone nut on this uh, so yeah if you want nuts made for your guitars give you a shout uh, I can make one for you the only thing is, I need the guitar to make it because I can get it to the rough shape for you but to finally fit it, fine fit it to your guitar, I need the guitar because I actually fit it to the guitar I don't, eh, uh, I'd rather just fit it to the guitar because some of the, sometimes the slots are something slightly different and eh, uh, you know, basically what I do is I polish it so it sides you don't, you can't feel, when you're on your finger up here you can't feel the sides it's just one fluid. It's highly polished, break angle, nice in it. So if you're looking for a nut, give me a shoot. <coughs> uh, I might actually do a video at one point. I'm babbling here. Uh, I might do a video at one point of me making a nut if any of my guitars ever need one. I made one for my. I made a black one for. because it came me a, a plastic shitty one. Uh, the 1980s East German P base that I've got. I actually made a, a graphite nut for that. Uh, took me ages to polish it. Thank you, else. Yeah, so that's it. So I'll let you hear this. <coughs> so, tone all the way off. Uh, it's basically a, a single pack up. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm babbling today, I don't know why. Mm -hmm. don't know. Uh, so. <laughs> Definitely, uh, 
that's, I, that's, I've got the 50s one that I wanted, so I'll be happy with this. My next thing that I'm doing is I've got loads of guitars up for sale. Loads of guitars. Uh, I've got the, the Kingdom up for sale. I've got the Ida Pro 2. I've got the LTD B50. Which I've got. I've got the five string acrylic bass up for sale for cheap. A few ones. Uh, because I want to, that's me new set to buy. I want to buy this, uh, I want to buy a Fender PVS white way maple neck. The one came up for sale for a good price. If that one goes, all I'd need to do is put an extra 150 quid to it and I would be able to buy a brand new one from Guitar Guitar. So I'm trying to raise about 700 quid. So I've got a few guitars up for sale. Because uh, I can't justify buying a Fender P bass with uh, getting rid of some of these first, so uh, I can't do it. I, I need to get rid of some guitars first that I don't really play very well. And this kind of spurred it on, this guitar. Because uh, I was, oh, was kind of swaying to sell guitars that I don't I really regret it. Uh, I was talking to Malco about, uh, Mad Malco about this actually. Uh, kind of getting buyer's remorse, but because I've got the YouTube channel and I've, I've kind of document, started documenting the bases that I've got, I don't feel so bad getting rid of them for some reason. Uh, plus, I'm obviously going to use the money to buy a PBS. So, yeah, so this kind of spurred it on because I didn't really want to get rid of the Jim Reed. Then this came up, and then I swapped the Jim Reed for this, then I kind of went, ah, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to do it. So, there's stuff up for sale. Uh, yeah, really nice bass. I'll show you, I'll show you as well while I'm on the update on the Bronco. So what I've done with the Bronco is I've changed the machine heads. I had to do a bit of messing about. Because machine heads that that are on this used to be on the Billy Sheen P bass. But I, I damaged one of the ferrules. And, I, and it, they're, they're, they're a bit of mill thicker, or two mill thicker. So what I had to do was, was I had to dismantle the machine heads, take the stock off the original one and basically mount them all together and basically make up the machine heads. So I had to mess about making them up. I've got my camera at the wrong, at the wrong angle today, so that's why I'm kind of messing about with these. So I've done that with that. I've also, blackened it out as well so this is vinyl so I just vinyled it so rather than paying 20 20 quid for a new scratch plate I vinyled it and it's turned out pretty alright to be fair you wouldn't know that that was vinyl uh, there was air bubbles in the vinyl but they've started to stretch out uh, there's no any bubbles anymore there used to be like bubbles right across here and then we've just been sitting. So what I did was I bought A3 vinyl, vinyled it, cut it to shape, heat gunned it and then left it sitting and all the bubbles have came out. So that's pretty, I'm pretty impressed with that. So I have, I've just bought a, a black pickup cover, it cost me about two quid or something. So yeah, so blackened it. Uh, it so looks more like uh, it looks more like a music master now so no difference is it's got, obviously it's a squire that's a different spot uh, no difference it's a squire and the scratch plates are different a slightly different shape so that was it I wanted to try and see if I could vinyl the scratch plates so now I know I can do them all the scratch plates I've got lying about, I don't need to buy different colours now, I just need to buy a mix pack of A3 vinyl and vinyl, that's it. So that's the, that's the uh, Squire Bronco, what was the other one? Oh, the P, the V Mini P, that's blackened out as well. Uh, I mainly did this for my son because he wanted he wanted a bass like, my have I got it right? Man, so he wanted bass a mini version of my uh, one that I did for like a Duff McKagan one. So 
obviously met the Duffy Kagan one's a PJ configuration. PJ configuration and it's got black hardware. But this kind of looks very similar, so he loves playing this now. Um, what I might do next is try and find. <coughs> might try and buy another scratch player, I'm not too sure. And get, this, get the, the mirror vinyl, and maybe mirror vinyl this as well, to see if I can get that done. So that's another thing I can do is vinyl scratch plates. So my next thing I'm going to do as well is I'm going to get an old scratch plate. I'm going to break it, purposely break it because I'm them, and try and join it back together and then vinyl it to see if I can make it look like it's never been broken in the first place. That's my next project. Other thing that I was doing as well is my nephew, I just thought I'd put this in the video since uh, I don't want to do a guitar, I don't want to do guitars very much because I'm more a guitar player, but my nephew's guitar was knackered. He's just starting out, that's why he's all the stickers and stuff. I would take them off, but he loves them. The volume pot was knackered, so he asked me to fix that. Put my new set of strings on, uh, and while I was in, I decided to fit a gummo switch. So, he doesn't even play guitar yet, he's just learning, and now he's got a guitar with a gummo switch. So, uh, yeah, so basically what happens is I don't obviously these are guitar players you know. Five way switch for a strat. So you've got uh, saddle, uh, bridge, bridge and middle, middle, middle and uh, neck, and neck. With a strat, you can't have the outside two pickups running together. That's what the gumbo switch does. So if you've got it in Start at the bridge position, you flick that switch, it'll put on two. And then if you go to the top, neck, switch that switch, it'll put on the outside two. I don't think that's the way you're meant to do it. I think it's the one that's in the top position you can do it, but this guitar wiring is not like any other guitar wiring, so that's the only way I could do it, is to do it that way. So he's going to got a gummo switch in his strat. Never heard this make before. But this is a really, for, a, for a, a, a Lela guitar, this is really nice. Heart the bridge, really nice. Electrics are actually okay in it. Neck's lovely in this, for being a wee learner. But, uh, nice root rosewood fretboard. So I don't know where, I don't know, I think my sister picked it up for him. Uh, sent it at a charity shop with a Marshall amp. And it was, I think it's pretty cheap. So she's done a good, she's got a definitely a good guitar for a starter. I've never heard this make before. I don't know what that is, is that Elka? Elka or something? But it's really finished nice. So there you go, that's this week's video. Uh, here we come to pack that up maybe next weekend or something. So I don't know. Yeah, so that's a CV50. Uh, Keep you posted if I get the vendor P base. Uh, hope you have a nice week. Carry on.